morning, everybody. Hi, Sherry and Chelsea. How are you today? Good morning. <laughs> We're doing great. <laughs> so Sherry and Chelsea are Moda designers. They have their 18th collection, Strawberry Lemonade, that just came out. And so we're going to do a trunk show today. It's going to be totally fun. We're going to show Strawberry Quilt Lemonade quilts, and then we're going to show like a bunch of their favorites. So we're going to have at least 25 quilts to show you today, which is super exciting. But we're also going to take time to just sit and chat. And so you can throw your questions in, and it's going to be totally awesome. So tell everybody if- We're so excited to be here. Oh, thanks. So tell everybody if they don't know how to find you, like how do they find your podcast, your website, your YouTube, all that. Okay, so everything is either a quilting life or at Chelsea Stratton. Yeah. <laughs> so the podcast and our YouTube are youtube.com slash a quilting life. And that's where you can find my blog. And also I'm on Instagram as a quilting life. And Chelsea's on Instagram as at Chelsea Stratton. <laughs> and she also has a blog. And is it Chelsea Stratton? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And tell us about like your journey of getting started. I was kind of telling Denise a little bit about it uh, before we started. But kind of talk about how, Sherry, you kind of like how you came into the industry and then how Chelsea came in and all of that. Okay. Yes, I was quilting a lot and I was it was back in the early 2000s when people were starting to blog about quilting. Mm -hmm. And I, your blog, The Jolly Jabber, was one of the first blogs I read and I remember reading Camille Ross Kelly's blog and I just thought I've got to start a blog just so I can keep track of what I'm sewing. And so that just kind of like led from one thing to another. And one day when I was coming back from teaching at a quilt retreat in Utah, I was driving by myself in the car and I just thought, I, I got to talk to my daughter because she's so creative and it would be really fun to design fabric. And it was so funny because when I got home, she was at my house actually, and I just th sprung it on her, you know, Chelsea. <laughs> and, and I promised, this is the funny thing, I promised her that she would never have to sew. <laughs> But she just helped me with the fabric, and uh, because at that time she wasn't, she wasn't planning on sewing at all. So it, it was really, really fun how it worked out. And now she can't stop sewing. Yeah, so. it's true. I'm I, very I, obsessed now. I have caught the bug. <laughs> But no, I was kind of surprised that she brought it up, and I was really, really excited. And after that, we just start. I started designing, and we flew in to Houston Quilt Market, probably fall fall 2014. Yeah, and met with Moda, and it was a fit. And <laughs> I'm so. I it's still like a dream come true. So. Well, yeah, I think it's so amazing. And to just to see your fabric. And, and guys, if y'all want to see, like, all of their fabric collections, the colorways and how they've changed, if you go to Moda Fabrics' website and click on Sherry and Chelsea, it shows snippets. And if you click in, you can see every single fabric they've ever designed. So that's pretty interesting to see how y'all were a little bit, like, Southwestern and, you know, how the colors have changed. <laughs> Right, yeah, it, it is really interesting, so. Okay, so let's talk about Strawberry Lemonade. So we got the pre-cuts yeah. in this week, and just FYI, the Fat Quarter and the Fat Eighth Bundles will probably sell out soon. All the pre-cuts are here. The, uh, we have a solid bundle that you guys put to, you guys picked the solids and we put this together. And of course, we're so honored that we picked your fabric for our Moonbeams 2024 charity quilt along. And I'll get to show everybody the quilt up close. And so the sew along is going to start in March. It's 68 by 80. And we have quilt kits, we have backing sets. And this is a snippet of the quilt. And I'll be do, doing tutorials on the YouTube channel to show you just different tips on each of the blocks. I would say it's a beginner to intermediate level. So um, super exciting. And if you get the kit up front, you get the, um, you get the pattern up front. So you can actually finish the quilt before it's actually done. So the pattern will come in here 
and it comes in this cute box. And um, so what are you guys gonna, are you gonna sew along with Moonbeams? And what are you guys gonna sew with? Yeah, we're actually gonna sew along and we are so excited to sew with that navy yes. that, that you added that we're gonna actually use strawberry lemonade. I think both of yeah. us. Okay, awesome. We both talked about that. <laughs> so the I navy, was like, are you um, using strawberry lemonade? <laughs> the, the navy, when we were designing, one thing that Jocelyn does, she pretty much designs a lot of the stuff. We always want our quilts to be different each year. So there's something, the theme, the size, the colors, everything has to be different because we want people to still sew because the whole goal is to work to raise money for Make-A-Wish along with Mark Dunn at Moda. And so we just were like, what if we have a dark background? What if we email them and say, is this okay? And so we added this navy background and a lot of people are excited about it. So it's really, it's really a good idea. And I'm kind of thinking maybe we do that in future years too. So you'll only yeah. find the navy at Fat Quarter Shop, which is super exciting. And we sent you guys yeah. some, well, so you'll have, so you have some. Yes. Yeah. And the yardage, yeah. oh, I forgot well, to say, the yardage will be here like next week. Only the pre-cuts have arrived. So next week, the yardage will be here. But if you're wanting um, the pre-cuts, so, I would not wait, or I would place your order for your pre-cuts now in case they sell out before the yardage comes. Uh, can people order that navy yardage from you? Yes. Just separate? Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. And, okay. and it'll be online when we put the <clears throat> regular bolts online. Okay. Yeah. And then yeah. Um, we just ordered a bunch of it and hopefully it'll last. You know, you never know. Yeah. <laughs> you never know. Yeah. I ordered yeah. so many of your pre-cuts. It might have been oh. one of the <laughs> strawberry lemonade fat quarter bundle was probably one of the largest pre-cut orders Kevin's ever placed. He was like, what is oh going God. on with this? And I was like, oh, they have a YouTube <laughs> channel and people are watching it. I was like, and they promote a lot of things on social media. So it's amazing how when designers show what you can actually do with the fabric, how much it influences people buying it because they're more confident in the color. Because I think that's the biggest, I don't know if that's what you find, but I find that people struggle with color. And if you show them right. what to do with the fabric, then they're more confident when it shows up at their door because they know, oh, Sherry did it, Chelsea did it, I can do it. You know, they know how it looks and so, I think it's great how y'all sew so many quilts in it because then it gives everybody confidence that, you know, when it comes to their house, they're gonna know what to do with it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I think strawberry lemonade is so versatile. Mm -hmm. You know, I just made a Valentine's project that you guys oh, have yeah. a free it's download. So and I use, yeah, I use strawberry lemonade. And, and then as I was doing that, I was like, I could do red and green from this collection mm -hmm. for Christmas too. Mm -hmm. So I think people will love it. Yeah, I think it's definitely going to be your all-time bestseller at Moda, like on sales. <laughs> so that's exciting. Yeah. So anything else you want to tell people about um, before we start doing the trunk mm -hmm. show? Uh, well, we'll I, I don't know. <laughs> we don't have any more. Well, we do, I guess. Uh, we're sewing right now with something new. Okay. Uh, but that won't be coming for a couple months, so. Yeah, and I can uh, tell you, um, we have something planned with it. So if you stay tuned to, like, towards the end when we get to the q and I can kind of tease a little <laughs> bit about it. Um, we can't tease much, but you can know that the three of us, along with Sarah and Jocelyn behind the scenes, are working on something that I think everyone will love. <laughs> So yes. that's exciting. <laughs> okay. And then Billy's your son and your brother. So he's going to be like showing the quilts today. So just yeah. so everybody knows <laughs> who's behind the camera. Or yeah, and he is behind <laughs> the camera. <laughs> so do you want to start with your first quilt? Yeah, okay. we're going to start with the first quilt, Billy. <laughs> you're on. <laughs> he, he's got everything stacked up and ready to go. And for each of them, we will tell you guys, um, the first ones that we're showing, like the first 20 or so, are going to be all from Strawberry Lemonade. Mm -hmm. We're going to tell you the finish size, show you the backing, the binding, and what pre-cut it uses. And then when we leave Strawberry Lemonade, then we'll tell you the collections, because some of those will be from older collections, just so everybody will know if they want to make it themselves. Okay. Yeah. And this first one is Montage. So, and it's fat eighth friendly. 
and it comes in a throw size and a bed size. And then and I think you can show the backing. Yeah, show the backing and the binding. And I love the inner, <laughs> I love the inner border in it. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Yeah, that inner border, it, we use that same fabric for the binding. And the backing is the large floral from Strawberry Lemonade. And each of the blocks are 16 inches finished. Yes. And that okay. center star is eight inches. I always try to tell people as much as I can because then they can kind of visualize how it would work with their stash. Right. Oh, and that one. And some is, of those stars are. That one's fat eighth friendly. Okay, he's 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 coming again. <laughs> he's coming back. He's flying solo today. <laughs> Do you want to talk anyway, about the one that's behind you? Watching her kids. Oh. Oh yeah. Okay, so this is four square, and this is actually one of my older patterns that I revised, and there are a few different sizes now for this. And one other thing I wanted to point out with this quilt is that if you can see those little hexagon flower blocks, mm -hmm. I fussy cut those from that hexagon cheater print yes. that we have. And that is so they were perfectly sized for this quilt. So yeah, and that's coming out. So that's part of the yardage that's coming out next week. And just so you know, I think yes. it's 60 inches wide. Is that correct? Yes, 60 inches wide. Yeah, and I love it because it's perfect if you put it on the back of a baby quilt because then it looks like you pieced both the front and the back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Yeah, and you can show the back too. Though. And this one has actually seven sizes. Yes. It um, uses charm packs and a layer cake. And I would say this one is very beginner friendly. You definitely. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, and then the quilt behind us is Family Tree. It's actually the collection that it's in is Clover Hollow, which is one of our what fifth collection yeah. maybe. Uh, wow. And it's a layer cake quilt. You can use the um, cake mix papers and a layer cake if you want, or you can also piece the half square triangles and you know using your own triangle paper or your own method but yeah it's it's an early pattern and I thought that would be a fun one to put back there because it's family tree and we're a family you know? <laughs> yeah. we're all working together so we're a family <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay uh okay so he's got coastal summer medallion <laughs> and this one's 70, this is, 72 inches square. Yes. And then what, yeah. it uses and, fat eights, right? Uh, yes, yeah. And I, I just love this one too because it's a big quilt, but as you add the layers, mm -hmm. you, you could actually stop at any point and make a table topper or a wall hanging or, you know, um, as I was putting it together, I kept thinking, Oh, this is cute just how it is, but then you can keep adding and adding and adding. That's a so, great idea. Keep I didn't think about that. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, I think you can show the back. And this Billy's one is getting a workout fat today. Eight friendly. <laughs> yes. And I love, I, I will like say I... that I love that all your patterns, a majority of them, are like pre cut friendly because that's great for the customer to know oh, most of them have it in their stash. But if they don't, they, you know, it gives them somewhere to start instead of having to buy, you know, a half yard of this, a quarter yard of this, a three eighths of this. Yeah. So. Yeah. I feel like I design a lot of fat eighth quilts. So, so do I. Do you? I design okay. so many fat eighths. Yeah. <laughs> that are fat quarters. <laughs> okay. Okay. He's got a smaller one this time. So yay. His arms. <laughs> He's probably so excited. It's upside down. Yep. Yep, perfect. I love this one. So this is the Jelly Roll Sampler. And this actually came about because people were emailing me and asking me, can you just design a quilt that just uses a Jelly Roll? And I love samplers. And so this was just kind of the result of doing something to answer those emails. 
And the back is actually the hexagon cheater print. So if you can, it's great for it. Once we got that oh, yardage, I started using it. It is. So cute. It's so fun for backings. And it would look yeah. so cute on point also on a backing. Because it would. It would and then this one's 47 yeah. inches square. And um, yeah, it uses a jelly roll and background. Yeah. And you could make it bigger by making two of every block mm -hmm. if you wanted to make a bigger quilt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, okay. The next one he's coming out with is Vintage 2. Ooh, cheater print on the back again. Cheater print Ooh. on the back again. We'll show you. <laughs> this is one of my favorite patterns this time. I don't know. It's uh, based on one of my really early patterns. And, but I made some updates and changes to it and did some things I wish I had done the first time. And I just really had fun playing with the combinations in Strawberry Lemonade for this one. And so this one's called Vintage 2. It's Fad 8th friendly and it's 62 by 75. One question that we're getting is talk about the backgrounds that you're using in these quilts. Are they from the collection? Are they Bella solids? What's your favorite Bella solid? Okay, yeah, you'll notice some of these blocks have a background from the collection and some look like it's a white, but it's actually the tone on tone from the collection. So I think we both use that as much as possible, the tone on tone from our collections. But when we run out, we use um, 9900200 Bella. Yeah. So, yeah, and he can turn that around. The, the whole backing is again. <laughs> the oh my gosh. <laughs> so fun yeah it's so fun <laughs> and then you do need some additional backgrounds for the jelly roll sampler so um for the yes. person asking i can't see your first name um shelly what i would do is go to the fat quarter shop website click jelly roll sampler click into it and then your second image will give you all your fabric requirements Okay, this next one is, I just wanted a really quick honey bun pattern, and it's one honey bun and one layer cake, and it's called Getaway. And it, it was so fast and fun to make. I just love this one. This one's fun because it's like, you could kind of strip piece all the little strips, you know, like I love looking at a quilt and looking at it and thinking, how could I make this? So I would probably attempt this where I do all the stars at one time, do all the strip blocks yes. at one time, maybe different days, then do the assembly on a different day. Just, you know, I'm always thinking of how could I break it up to fit it in my schedule. And so I love when it has two blocks because you can kind of break that up into two days. Yeah, and that, that's exactly how I did it too. <laughs> and speaking of and the low volumes, this one has a lot of low volumes in it. So this one has a lot yes. of different backgrounds. Yes, and I used the, those from the layer cake. That's how I got those all the different backgrounds. So, and then I went, I don't usually go dark with my backings, but yeah. this time I did because I kind of pictured this mm -hmm. as something I could use as a picnic quilt and I wanted a dark backing if I, it was I on the grass. I love it yeah. so much. Yeah. I love that, I love that color and that print too. Yeah. That teal in the collection is just one of my favorite yeah. colors. And that one was 63 yeah. inch square and it uses a honey bun and a layer cake and some low volume prints. And if you guys have hey, any Chelsea questions, you can just pop now. them in and we'll answer them as we go. <clears throat> just to give Billy some time. Okay. I love this <laughs> you know, one. Right? This is my favorite. Oh, thank you. Same. I love, this is Hearts at Home too, and this is one of my honey bun patterns. And I love this one because I had originally designed Hearts at Home, but I wanted those blocks to be smaller because I think it's so cute when you have small log cabin blocks. Mm -hmm. So the heart's in the center and it makes use of the low volume fabrics from the collection. So I just love this one so much. Yeah, and, and, and I pieced it for her. Oh yeah. <laughs> But she Mom told made me it. I had to follow her pattern exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Miss, I don't quilt, but oh, now I do. That's yeah. so funny. <laughs> it's funny how things change. Um, this one's 48 by so 57, too. 
Oh, go ahead. What'd you say? Oh, no, I said I am. I was definitely opinionated when I asked her to piece this one. <laughs> <laughs> so this one's 48. And it, the backing oh, looks plain, but it's it's got flowers mm-hmm. on it. It's hard to see. Yeah. But it's the little tiny flowers. It's the posy print, the little posy flower print. And that one's 48 by 57, uses two honey buns, plus, um, you know, some yardage for the centers and the borders and the binding. That one is really great. Also kind of how Sherry was talking about, you know, that one's easily adjustable because right now it's five by six, but you could easily do three by three for a baby quilt. You know, that one's easily sizable. Yeah. Yeah, and you made the yeah. the three by. There's a smaller version included in her pattern. In the right? yeah, in the original. It, oh, okay. the original. Mm-hmm. Okay. Upside down. Oh, upside down. We want. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, those are strawberries. <laughs> those are strawberries. <laughs> So your lines are upside down. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, so this one is such a favorite. It's Summer Slice. And let me just tell you, I was so excited designing this one. Um, you have watermelons and you have uh, strawberries and lemons and limes. And it's just a great row quilt. And especially for people who just, you know, like, hey, this month I want to focus on this row or even as, sh- as shop owners. I had a lot of fun with this one and just think it's so cute. And the pattern is just awesome. Lots of graphics so that you can really easily see everything. And yeah, fat quarter friendly too. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And this one's 57 by 71. And the, yeah. If you could also, Billy, show the top too. The watermelon blocks so use a yeah, use a very t- top row. use a template, but it's easy and it's in the pattern. And I did want to point yeah. out that in you both of y'all's patterns, y'all do full color, so it's very easy to follow the patterns because you can visualize it instead of it being in black and white. Yeah. And I love this really really busy floral for the backing too. <laughs> Yeah, I love, I love how, like, every single one of the quilts you've shown has a different backing, except for the one that the cheaters. (laughs) Because I kind of, do you ever feel like you get stuck in a rut? Sometimes I feel like, like, I will pick the same backing over and over and over, and my employees have to say, like, oh, you already picked that one. Oh, you already picked that one. Right. Because, you know, like, you become a creature. I do that all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like you come a like it's like a creature of habit. Like you know, you just like and you don't remember. I mean, I don't remember what I did five minutes ago, but um, yeah. I'm really bad about not changing up my backings as much as I should. I always gravitate towards like a certain one. I'm the same way. Mom is like super good at like having a variety of everything. Oh. So. <laughs> This oh, is a big quilt. This is a huge quilt. I'm so sorry. And I used the cheater on the back as well. So, so oh, poor Billy. Yeah, they can see enough of it. This is Sunshine Girl. And this is actually, when I design patterns, I kind of get sen- sentimental. You could probably and that <laughs> it's um, a really, really fun quilt to make because... We, you use so many color combinations in this quilt, and it really is the one quilt that shows how well this, the strawberry lemonade fabrics, they work with every single color and every single print in the whole quilt. Like, it's awesome. Yeah. Um, just so many different combinations. But it's kind of inspired by um, the early days where my mom would take me to the beach, so. Mom loves the beach and she loves the sun. (laughs) And I have to say, I have a picture of this quilt and sometimes I go look at it when I'm getting ready to sew my Moda Blockheads blocks. And because she has so many unique combinations there, I'll think, oh, what do I want to use today? My brain's not working. I'm just going to go look at her quilt. (laughs) Oh, thank you. Yeah, Yeah, because you use three different um, colors slash print combos in each um, block. And that one is 74 by 88. It's fat quarter friendly. And I did, Billy, bring it back. I want to show how it has a secondary design. Oh, bring that back. Oh, that was Sorry. <laughs> I just, I think it's cool. Can you point out, Chelsea, like where the block is? Because it can be deceiving yes. and it really has a secondary design that 
that you really okay, see so when it's all put that. together. Okay, so this corner, so this is the block right here in the corner. But yeah, this is kind of the secondary block that you see in the quilt. But this is the actual block that you make, is this square right here. And these are the outer corners of the block. Yeah, so very doable. Hopefully it that looks was harder helpful. than it is, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does look harder than it is, but it's not actually, and it goes together really quickly, I feel like. Yeah. Okay. I feel like when, after you have like, if you, like I tried to stay really organized with that one, like it had all of the block color combos together, but after that I can just like start sewing. So it was super nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this next one I will start talking about because it is also a boxed kit with Moda Fabrics. And my kits actually arrived uh, last week or this past week. And they are so cute. I forgot to bring a boxed kit with me. But it's Botanical Remix and it's based off of my... Um, I think my, my original pattern was called Botanical. Yeah. <laughs> I'm drawing a blank. And there are four different flower blocks. All the stems are the same, but four different designs for the flower portion. And it's just kind of a cool remix of the original pattern and not, not difficult at all. It's kind of, I kind of like to call this like, uh, I don't know, it's kind of like my Be Mine quilt where it's like, each of the blocks, you, each of the flower blocks uses a different technique. So that's always really fun in a pattern. So, but I love this one so much. So that one comes I did in. Too. A, I bought a kit. Oh, you did? Okay. So that comes in the box. <laughs> I did. I'm going to make it. The box kit. And just so you guys know, the backing <laughs> set will be available at Back Quarter Shop yeah. next week, but the kit came in already because that's kind of how like pre cuts always come first just so customers know why one is online and one isn't, but I think we might sell out of that kit today. That one's Fat Eighth Friendly, oh 68 wow. by 81, <laughs> and super cute. I didn't even notice that the flowers were all different, so that's pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah lots of different combos, and I, I love that one. I like the border that I put on it. Mm -hmm. um, normally, I don't do a print border. Like, I normally just do a low volume. And, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. this is another big uh, one. this is an i only make big. large quilts <laughs> like i my mom makes different sizes but i'm always like the bigger the better but um <laughs> this is miss magnolia and it's based we'll i'll show you the original magnolia that was designed with seashore drive uh later but i wanted to make that a big big block so I made some changes and this is the second version of that. So it's called Miss Magnolia and it is a big block quilt. I can't remember the exact size. I don't know if it's, it's a 24 inch. It's 80, oh, 81 thin. inches square. And I'll look at the size of the, yeah. the blocks and it uses fat quarters. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes I just really like a refresher and sewing just a big, big, big blocks so <laughs> oh yeah those blocks are 24 inches yeah and, they're very very large yeah and you know even if you just did one of those blocks that would make a great pillow or a great wall hanging oh, yeah. or a great baby blanket yeah. just one block yeah yeah actually i need yeah. now i need to go make a pillow that's a great idea yeah. really <laughs> Okay, is that the last of the strawberry lemonade? Oh, that was the last of the strawberry lemonade. Okay. <laughs> is there summer star medley? Um, I, oh, it's on my wall upstairs. <laughs> okay, we'll just skip it. <gasps> okay. It, that one comes in several sizes too, but I actually only made the smallest one. And yeah, it's it's on my the wall on my sewing room. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, let's do that one. So you can... Yep, so mom pieced, so now I think we're gonna go into some favorite quilts and mom pieced this one for me. This is called Little Town and this is in our favorite things uh, fabric collection. 
I love houses and I love the little like scalloped roofs. It's kind of hard to see in the video because I wanted these to look like they had snow on the roofs. And we yeah, have, one yeah, <laughs> but trees with the stars on top and just little cottages kind of looking like a little village. And I actually originally made this one using folklore by Vanessa Gertzen of Lella Boutique. And I just knew I had to make it again in Favorite Things. And it's 61 by 65. What collection does that use? Uh, favorite things. Okay. The Christmas collection. And a lot of people still have that uh, collection. Yeah. And it's fat eighth friendly. Okay. Billy's dog is here today, Jack. Oh my gosh, we gotta see the dog at some hoping. point. I know. I, I was hoping Jack would just kind of show up and sit with us, but he, he's kind of sleeping right in the middle of the walkway where, where Billy's Billy, trying to Billy move. has to go around him all the time. A true lab. A true lab. <laughs> oh, and he's big too then. Yeah, either it could go the other way. Yeah, that's yeah. Fine. Oh, love this quilt pattern. I just did some videos on YouTube with it. This is all American and there's four different blocks in this quilt so lots of variety and i really really wanted to do something patriotic when i designed it and i just love that i almost all of my quilts either have an alternating block or like more multiple. than one yeah multiple. <laughs> i don't know why i love doing that but yeah all american and i believe it's fat quarter friendly yeah it uses 16 fat quarters and then background yeah. border it's 66 by 78 and what collection is that so this one is harper's garden and i've made this more than once i think three times <laughs> awesome so let's see the back oh show the backing yeah i actually did a piece to backing i think i had run out of just one print so i'm like oh i have two i'll just like yeah. Put together something on the back. Yeah, I didn't know you had a piece back. I are you so proud of me? I am. <laughs> I love piece backings. Uh, yeah. Sometimes I feel like I should make the backing up front just so at the end I don't yeah, run out of steam. So true. To do it, you know? Right. That is very true. Yeah. Because yeah, at the end sometimes you just want to get it to the quilter and you just do one a, a solid backing, but yeah, make it make the backing first. Yeah. And speaking of piece backing, the Moonbeams has the coolest backing, like everything you guys did for that. So, thank you. Jocelyn did that. <gasps> Jocelyn. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this next one is fat quarter friendly, and this was in our Simply Delightful collection. This is dazzling. Also one of my favorite quilts I've ever designed just because again, it uses a lot of different color combos and kind of has this, this other little block, mm -hmm. but that's not, it's just, you know, that's just kind of made from putting the blocks and the sashing together. So really, really love dazzling and all the different colors in this quilt. And that one's 70 inches square, fat quarter friendly and simply delightful collection. Okay. Let's see the back. Oh yeah, we want to see the back. It, it's the multicolored orange peel. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Orange peel. Not sure if it shows up. So if it'll show up any better. Oh yeah, I love that print. I think I still have yeah. some of that. And then with the stripe binding is so cool too. That was that was a great collection because there was the stripe. We had so many different like stripe options for the bindings. Billy's gonna be so buff after this. Yes, he's gonna go take a nap. He's gonna be tired. He's, yeah. he's, getting, he's getting his steps in too. Okay. Oh this is blissful and even though favorite things was a christmas collection i still made a valentine's quilt out of it <laughs> using all of the reds and the pinks and the grays and 
I like I have so many heart quilts, but I keep designing heart quilts. So I don't know why I just like designing hearts, but uh, this is just a really, really fun one that shows kind of with a collection that you can do. It's versatile and you can do different things with it. So that's this also favorite things, cute. right? Strawberry lemonade. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah. And that one's what were you saying? super cute. Yeah. In strawberry lemonade. Oh, it would be totally. Yeah. It's 68 by 80 and fat eighth friendly. And then this is, yeah, this is the daisy print. Yeah. The daisy print. Yeah. 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 I think it's, t yeah. Called chamomile is what I called it, but. What what batting do you what batting are you using in all your quilts? Oh, so we use the same. Yeah, yeah, most of the most of the quilts up until the past year or so, we always used warm and white. Mm -hmm. But our quilters have actually been using a bamboo batting lately yeah. with I some like of it. them, and I like it. Yeah. yeah. So this is in our Bountiful Blooms collection. And I had, I had designed hearts at home and I had always told myself, someday I'm gonna do like something different and do a log cabin block with like either pumpkins or maple leaves. And so I did leaves in this one. And uh, I just love the Bountiful Blooms collection. It was different for us. It was definitely a different um, avenue that we took. So kind of bigger block, um, bigger blocks in this one. And yeah, just a good fall quilt. <laughs> and it's fat quarter friendly, 79 inches yeah. square. And I think that would be so cute if you made a mini version of it. Yes, yes, it would for a wall hanging. Yeah, really I love it. <clears throat> okay, the backing. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh. Yep, I don't know if they'll be able to see it, but yeah. just. There's little flowers. Flowers and some pluses in between the flowers. Yeah. And in the Bountiful Blooms collection, it has kind of this like dusty rose pink color on the border. And I just love that color. That was so much fun to sew. Yeah. With. So how do you guys come up with the names for all of your quilts and your fabrics? <sighs> I have to say something about this oh, no. because we will text back and forth about the names of collections <laughs> and sometimes it is so funny because mom will have like these names that she's thinking of and I'm like no I don't think so but then a lot of times we'll end up going back to that and it's perfect but our conversations are really funny because we just sometimes just we brainstorm and it's hilarious <laughs> at, at quilt market we were in oh. the hotel room late one night and she was trying to sleep and i just kept saying well how about this name for this collection <laughs> no mom how about this name and anyway she turned me down on one but we ended up using it <laughs> yeah it was moda's favorite favorite name for an upcoming collection <laughs> and i was like shocked i'm like oh my goodness <laughs> No, it, yeah, mom, cool. if you know her, like she, her brain doesn't stop like going and like the, the ideas don't stop flowing. So like at quilt market, I'll be so exhausted. And she's just like, what about this? What about this? What about this 2027 for 2027? And I'm like, oh, like I can't, I have to, my brain can't think that far ahead. So. Okay, so this is, I showed you guys Miss Magnolia and the Strawberry Lemonade Collection. This is the original pattern that I was inspired by. It is my Magnolia quilt and uh, designed this in Seashore Drive. And just, I love the smaller version too. I think it shows off a lot of prints and a lot of color and just a lot of fun. So yeah. one of my favorite quilts. And these blocks it. are 16 inches. The quilt is 74 yeah. inches. But we do have some questions on the Magnolia and the Miss Magnolia. So before we move quilts, Jeannie wants to know, she's making the Miss Magnolia quilt that has the bigger blocks. And she okay. she notices that in your Magnolia pattern that Billy's holding, there's nine patches as cornerstones. 
Would you be able to add yeah. that easily to Miss Magnolia? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, totally. Um, so she, yeah, she totally could. Yeah. And, and actually that's really funny. That's a really great question because when I had originally designed, uh, when, when I was designing Miss Magnolia, I did originally have that in there. And then I thought this quilt is already so big. I'm just gonna like take this out. <laughs> and so that's the reason why. So if you look at it, I think what they would do is just add a corner square, add a square right here in the corner. And that's what would create that, right? Yep, yep. In each block, she could just add the cornerstones up at the top, each corner. Yeah, so it would, it would definitely change a little bit her piecing, but she, yeah, she could add that and um, just one square in each corner. And do you think this pattern, either one of them are beginner friendly? Yes, 100%. Uh, and I love this pattern because again, like just the graphics, just it just shows it so perfectly. Totally beginner friendly. The technique used in there is beginner friendly. Uh, very beginner friendly. Yeah. I think a lot of your stuff is beginner friendly and very, yes. very approachable because you write it with pre-cuts and because you put your patterns and color. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree. I, I think coming from someone who started quilting later in life, I do gravitate towards beginner friendly because I feel like my journey didn't start that long ago. And so that's where I'm comfortable too. <laughs> and I also feel like, you know, we're busy. We're moms, we have kids. We need yeah. something that you can do and actually achieve. Definitely. Okay, so Billy just brought in my summer fun. Uh, it, I, it's called the summer fun block of the month, but it doesn't have to be a block of the month. And it's in our Seashore Drive collection. I was getting quilts out of the cupboard last night and I, I thought I have to share this one because I didn't have a quilt in Seashore Drive and I love, oh. love, love that collection. So. And that one's 57 by 72 and fat eighth friendly. Yeah. Okay. So I guess now he's on the stack of my quilts. So. <laughs> yeah, so uh, all these it's quilts. It's hard to choose your favorites. Yeah, the, um, the quilts are a combination of Sherry's quilts. Some of them are published by Sherry. Some of them are published by Chelsea. You can find all of them on their Etsy sites or Fat Quarter Shop, and we sell them as paper patterns and PDF patterns for everyone wanting to know where to find them. I love this one. <laughs> love this one. Oh, yeah, when, when you reached out and asked us to share some of our favorites, this had to be on the list. Yep. This is Maple Sky, and it's actually Maple Sky Remix because there is a mini that I added to the pattern that's included. And this is Bountiful Blooms, and I just love this. You can tell some of the leaves have our low volume prints from the collection as the backgrounds, some of the larger leaves. And I, I just, this is one of my favorites for sure. It's one of my favorites. <clears throat> so, yeah. So the throw is 62 by 76 and fat quarter <clears throat> friendly. And then the mini quilt is 21 inches square and layer cake friendly. And that was one of my favorite prints from Bountiful Blooms mm -hmm. on the back, just a, a fun floral. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so you guys have to start thinking of what's your favorite so that at the end we can kind of read off some of your at guys' end, favorite. No. I mean, I don't know how y'all are going to pick. The very thick. <laughs> That's so hard for me. That's hard. Because I get so excited when I design new quilts, like especially for a new collection. Uh, I, I love them all. <laughs> oh, this is a favorite too. I love so many of your quilts. This one is has been a favorite, and I've I've actually really loved uh, seeing it, seeing other people make it in different collections. But this is coastal, and it was in American Patchwork and Quilting a few years ago, and just little stars. They're actually set on point. 
And this is our Balboa collection. So do you want to trace like the blocks so they can see the low volume print where that is, where oh, your yeah. sashing is? Oh. So they can yeah. see. Yeah, so these alternating blocks are, are the low volume print that I just used the whole thing throughout. And then there's star blocks and then sashing and posts. So we do have people asking, like, what do you two consider to be low volume prints? I think if it's not going to absolutely overwhelm, yeah, then then I, I'll consider it a low volume. If it's soft enough to not overwhelm the quilt. Yeah, I agree with that. So because if not, I just consider it a print. If it's so busy that that I just see color, yeah, then yeah. Yeah. Oh, and I did a darker background too. Oh my goodness. And it's 60, yeah, and you, 67 inches square and layer cake friendly. Sorry. I'm trying to make sure I get everything in there. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. No, that's good. Informative is better. Yeah. So. <laughs> and we can't, I'm glad you have all the measurements. I know. We can't keep it in our heads. Yeah. So. So somebody's okay. wanting to know what is the Quilting Life Academy? Oh, I, I just, we're starting on Monday, actually. I just released an online course. Oh, so okay. all the way from very beginning, uh, it's a six week course and we, we do start on Monday. So uh, really excited about that. I mentioned it's bold. So yeah, we're gonna have a waiting list though um, and run another session in the summer. Okay. So, yeah. so Billy this said it's quilt, cold. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he's the one that's been helping me get all the videos ready. But this, this quilt is called Mahalo. And I made a, a different version of this quilt that was in American Patchwork and Quilting. And then when our Desert Bloom collection came out, I had to remake it again in our fabrics. And it's actually based on a quilt that my great great grandmother did. Her blocks were a little bit smaller and my grandmother gave me the quilt and it was just in shambles, just falling apart. And I did a lot of research and found out where she got the pattern in the 1930s. And but when I recreated it, I made it bigger so that you could use charm packs. But I would say this is definitely an intermediate quilt. Uh, it, it's really not beginner friendly, but it is a lot of fun if you're if you're an intermediate quilter. So um, it's 66 square, 66 inches square, yes. uses a layer cake and two charm packs. So how are you doing? Is that curved piecing or how do you? It is. It is curved piecing. Okay. Yeah. And I, I hand appliqued one of my versions, okay. the first version I actually did by hand, and this one I did by machine. Oh, so, okay. Uh, yeah. So, and then I also, there's a template for the wedges so, that you can use. So it, it actually, it, the cutting is super easy. It's just getting those wedges lined up mm -hmm. that is more of a challenge. Yeah. And I love that backing and print. That, I remember that one. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, that was one of my favorite prints from that collection. Desert Bloom was kind of like a pivotal moment for us. We really, really chased. That's when our design started to change. And so I love that collection. Yeah. I feel like it was a little bit, it was kind of a yeah, bridge cool. between our fur early collections and then yeah. what was coming. I like that word, a bridge. bridge. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. So. Okay. Oh, yeah, we both love <laughs> row quilts. So this is Family Farm, and I just kind of made it as an homage to my, a lot of my family is from Iowa. And so I just, and I kind of was thinking of my grandmother too and some of her favorite blocks when I made this quilt. Maybe lower it down a little bit. Um, yeah, even a little, yeah. There's Ohio stars at the top flying geese, patchwork, flowers, just a little bit of everything that I love in this quilt. That one's 45 by 54, fat eighth friendly. I would say beginner friendly, and it features the Harper's Garden collection. So this one's from 2019. Yes. Yeah, 
Yeah, and it's still a favorite. It's one that I like to hang up in my sewing room seasonally, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah, love that one. <laughs> We love them all. We love I, them every all. single one. We're like, I, I love that one. <laughs> it was hard. I <clears throat> um, getting all the quilts out of the quilt closet last night. I was. I just kept thinking of more that I could have put in the pile, and I had to force myself to leave them in the closet. Yeah, and I think it's always fun to get out old quilts because it brings back memories of when you made the quilt and what inspired yeah, the yeah. quilt and. Like that last one, I think, was a Moda boxed mm -hmm. kit. You know, you just kind of go back in time and think about all the things from. So they bring yeah. so many good memories. Yeah, this one is also from Harper's Garden. Yeah, I and it, 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 vintage charm. And this has been a really well. You know, people have really liked this pattern, and I actually just revised it and put it into a booklet format too to make it easier for my printing. But yeah, this is just a Ohio stars and that traditional chain. And I, I've just loved this. I've taught this in classes several times. And I always love seeing the fabrics that the students pick for the their quilt. And I think this one would be great even if you took the sashing out. And then it would just yeah. like create these big circle, like it would create even more circles if you took the sashing out. Yes. So, yeah. And it's yeah. Fat eighth friendly and 63 inches square. Yeah. Yeah. Harper's Garden, I've I've come to find that all the quilts that I made with that collection are, have been some of my favorites. Yeah. Yeah. We think Okay, and I can't remember what I used on the back. Oh. The aqua and the navy yeah, are so yeah. good from that collection. Yes. Oh, yeah. Agreed. Yes. Oh, and then Billy, they, they say you have to pick a favorite quilt too, so we have to make oh, sure he Billy, answers too. Okay, they want you to tell us what your favorite quilt is. <laughs> he laughed. He just laughed. <laughs> oh, he wants to know if it has to be one of our patterns. Oh, wow. okay, okay. Ask him if he wants to get paid. Oh, uh, Kelly <laughs> said, ask you if you want to get paid. <laughs> Sorry, I can be kind of honorary sometimes. <laughs> that was great. That was perfect. <laughs> oh, another medallion. Oh, this well, was my first medallion quilt that I did. This one? Yeah, it, yeah. It, it's good either way. And I love this Summer is, Sweet. This is Gelato with our Summer Sweet collection. And uh, yeah, this was my first attempt at, at a medallion. And I just actually really really love this quilt. i love that one i love churned ash i love the skinny churned ash blocks and uh i love stars you make you know you definitely make a lot of stars there's for so one. many in that one yeah so and this one's great also how you said on the other one you know you could make it as small or as large as you want you right. know you could make just yeah. the center and it's 70 inches yeah. square fat eighth friendly and I would say yeah, intermediate. Yeah, and it was a Moda box kit. I would, oh, yeah. yeah, I would say. Yeah, a, I would think. At least just confident looking at it. beginner. Yeah. So, yeah, this was a, definitely a favorite. And gelato. I love gelato. I, 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 there's no place in Las Vegas where I found a good gelato like I can get in Southern California down in Laguna Beach. And so I just love to go down there and get gelato so i had to make a gelato quilt okay i am sure in one of those high fancy casinos you can find some good gelato maybe i, I need know. to come down there and find some for you yes yes if anybody knows any good gelato tell in her Vegas, please tell me yeah billy oh. just said you got to go to the strip mom yeah yeah i know and you probably hate that because it's so touristy but that's like my favorite place in the Bill whole world, and I know that sounds horrible, but <laughs> I love Vegas. I just like to watch the people was, and look at all the fancy stuff, and everyone's all dressed up. Yeah, I was actually just down there this weekend. Billy gave my husband and I and me uh, tickets to a Golden Knights game, so we got to walk around a little, and just the energy being down there is really, yeah. really fun. Okay, so who's the Golden Knights? 
They're the they're the hockey team oh, okay. in Las Vegas. Okay. Yeah. I should know so that. It was my first time going to a hockey game. The Super Bowl is here this year too. Yeah, Super Bowl yeah. is in a few weeks in Las Vegas. Oh, it is. So this. Yeah. 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 So this is Happy Go Lucky, and I. I this might be my favorite <laughs> quilt. I I don't know. This really might be it, and. I just wanted to make something really fun and really scrappy. It's with our Simply Delightful collection, and it was, it, it just lent itself to a scrappy quilt. But I also wanted people to be able to use their stash, and it's been really fun to see all the quilts that people have made with uh, this pattern, just using stuff in their stash. So it's been super fun. And also, just a teaser, I have a companion pattern for this coming out in March. Awesome. And then we're going to Nuts. show the one that I made. I basically replicated yours completely. Okay. And this was fun. Yes. Oh, yeah. This was fun because on Reddit, I'm always on Reddit. So I was on Reddit and someone posted a picture and had made this. And so remember, Sherry, I sent you the, I sent you a text and was like, yes. oh my gosh, somebody on Reddit made it. Yeah. You sent me that from, yeah. And I can't remember what I, Put on the back. Oh, the backing was actually from uh, Seashore Drive. Sometimes I oh, get no, my that's Emma. Right? or Emma. Emma. Okay, yeah. yeah. Sometimes I get my quilts done, and I use other collections for the backing if I run out of yeah what I'm sewing with at the time. But yeah, that's definitely one of my favorites. And I'm I'm actually sewing Happy Go Lucky too right now. So it's, <laughs> that's what's on my sewing table. Okay, they say the Venetian has amazing gelato. Ooh. The Venetian gelato. Okay. okay. I'm going to, oh, thank you. <laughs> that was quick. That was that was quick. Yeah. <laughs> Did you hear that, Billy? We get, they said for me to go to the Venetian. <laughs> Billy's like, I told you it would be on the strip. <laughs> I think the last one out of the quotes you've shown was my favorite. Oh, yeah, happy, oh okay. happy go lucky. Yeah. Billy said happy go lucky is his favorite. But some other ones you made me that just are just that you made me, I like. You know, oh, okay. Like the one I use. So this is potluck, and it was one of my early patterns. I the, My first version of it I made with a Sweetwater collection. And it, it's a layer cake, and you actually don't have to add the Dresden block if you lower it just a touch. Yeah, yeah, lower it. Um, okay. You, uh, the layer cake will make everything, but if you if you want it to get done more quickly, you can leave that out and just replace it with a layer cake square. But this one it has been really fun to see in all different collections. I also made a Christmas version of this. Yeah, you did. With the Swell Christmas collection by Ur Urban Chicks, that was. <gasps> really fun so cute uh but yeah it's just, yeah just yeah. great way to use a layer cake so i had to share this one and this is with emma so and it's got a it's also got a gray backing i think you used that backing twice yeah and that one comes yeah. in two sizes a baby size and a throw size and they're both layer cake friendly yes yeah when i updated that pattern i i just thought this would be so great as a baby quilt because you could uh something fast and fun that you can get ready to give as a gift. And so I added that size when I updated the pattern. Awesome. So that's all the quilts, right? Is that all the quilts, Billy? Yeah. Hey, remember oh, that one love. that I told them I was going to share? Made, oh, with made with love. I think it's upstairs. Could you go get it? It's just that little wall hanging with the hearts. It, it's probably in my sewing room or just in the hallway. Yeah, yeah, that one was so cute. Yeah, I just finished it with strawberry lemonade. Very and, cute. Uh, uh, you guys have so many fun free patterns, and I love sh sharing them on my blog and stuff. And when I went to make it, my first thought was that I was going to use Sincerely Yours. Yeah. Oh, but then yeah. I thought, because it would, I still have scraps, and but then I was like, no, I have to make this with strawberry lemonade because the reds and the pinks are perfect for Valentine's. Yeah. So hopefully he can find it. I had it out. I showed everybody yesterday when we did our sound check. So 
Yeah, so talking about free patterns, do you want to talk about the free block of the month that you offer on your blog each year? Just because I think it's great. Because, yes. You know, a free resource for everybody. Yeah, so every year I do a free block of the month and <clears throat> we, we release the patterns on the first Monday of every month and they're free and I have a setting. Uh, sometimes I have a couple settings. This year we're doing a 16 inch and an eight inch size. So I'll hold this up. That's so, so this pretty. Is, this is the, the fat quarter shot made with love. I had so much fun and I love it. yeah, strawberry, <clears throat> strawberry lemonade. But on the back, I did use uh, oh, simply yeah. delightful. We had a pink <clears throat> that works. If you still have some of that around, it will yeah. work with strawberry lemonade. I too. love it in strawberry lemonade. So yeah. cute. And that one, what I loved about it when I pieced it was it was so quick. I think I made it in like two hours or something. It was so quick. <laughs> Yeah, same. I think I made it, yeah, just a couple hours on a Saturday morning and and just loved it. Do you all want to talk about blockheads and, um, you know, Moda Blockheads program, what you guys are sewing? Yeah, we're both Moda Blockheads designers yeah. and you haven't shared your blog I yet. I haven't shared mine yet. Okay, okay yeah. I've shared both of mine already, so I'm kind of done sharing, but it's, now you get to just sew. I get to just sew and the sew along is going through July. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's never too late to join in. And every week you get a block in 12 inch or six inch and the patterns are all free from Moda and I'm using strawberry lemonade, but, uh, in a, in a, I'm going to at some point switch and <laughs> The next collection is going to be in with it. She's okay. trying to be so careful right now. It's so yes. hard for her. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, so mine is going to end up having two different collections in it. But right now, all you're seeing is the strawberry lemonade. So, so are you going to sew it, Chelsea? Yes, okay. I, I am going to try to get caught up <laughs> now that the new year is here. And I, I just finished up some deadlines with said coming collection. So yeah, and I am really, really excited about my block too. I love it so much. I actually loved it so much. I thought, oh, I wish I would have saved that for like oh. a pattern. <laughs> it was, it's so cute. So I'm really excited about it. Awesome. So I'm going to kind of go through question. I'm going to go through some things that I noticed just to kind of that, that I'm curious about. And then I'm going to go through questions that came in throughout the live stream and then the ones that came in before. Um, what what techniques, you know, I noticed in a lot of your quilts, you've got half square triangles, hourglass, you have a lot of traditional blocks. Are there any techniques you would recommend um, that make your quilts go easier or anything that you use throughout all your quilting? Well, I... I am a convert to triangle paper. <laughs> I really resisted for a long time. And I was actually in Dallas, a few, I think it was 2019. And I was with some other Moda designers and I was making these half square triangles all just like one at a time. You know, well, the two at a time method right. where I you draw and, and they were looking at me and they were all like, why aren't you using triangle paper? And I, I asked each one of them and they were all like, yeah, use triangle paper. So I'm such a, I had to test it out. So right. I made 16, 16 half square triangles with triangle paper and then 16 my way. <laughs> and they were right. Oh. It was faster with the paper. Did you so time I, it? I timed it. <laughs> that was so weird. <laughs> so I did, and I did it in my hotel room that night. And then I went back the next day and we were all teaching at a retreat and I was just like, well, you guys are right. I timed it. So, That's oh my so goodness. Funny. So, yeah. This is so you. I love it. <laughs> so, yeah. So lo love triangle paper. And, uh, and the funny thing was I had triangles on a roll that you had sent me. Yeah. And so then it was great because then I was like, oh, I, I have this size already. I can use it. And, uh, cause you have about every size there is. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Chelsea, is there anything I, that I, you use throughout all your quilts? I I feel like I'm I feel like 
I've used triangle paper, and definitely if I'm going to do half square triangles, what that Doug's ruler. Yes. <gasps> Doug's ruler is yes. a good one. Yeah, yeah. For and the somebody e- asked see, about and that. Actually, yeah, talk yeah, about the ruler and name. Actually, easy, easy corners. That's yeah. like actually what I prefer to do. You'll notice a lot of my patterns. That's the technique I use, and I have two sizes. It's both of them. He only has the two, right? Right, right. Yeah, and. Yeah, Doug's is actually the one I use. Yeah, yeah I think yeah. it's the simple folded corner ruler and then the simple mini. Simple folded, yeah. Mini, mini simple. simple. Yeah. 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 And I feel like I use that mini size the most, mm-hmm. and I probably use it weekly. I think I, I, I use, use that one the most. Yeah. Yeah. And you gave me that one, yeah. 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 Are there any notions that you just, like, can't live without? Oh. Okay, so I have to tell you, I just tried a new one. Okay. And my friend Nancy Lane, she's Treehouse Quilts on Instagram. She told me that she likes the magic quilting spray that you all carry. Oh, and okay. And I ordered three bottles of it, and I tested it out yesterday for the first time, and I love it. It just, it's not a heavy, heavy starch, mm-hmm. but it gives a little body. Mm-hmm. And I, I really enjoyed it. I was making a log cabin block yesterday, so I tested it out, and I was super happy with it. I'm glad I ordered three bottles. So you don't so. starch, right? That was another question that had come in. No. No. No, I don't yeah, starch. I but she was telling me she doesn't starch either, but she really thought this was a good option if you don't want to take the time. Right. Kind of an in-between, mm-hmm. yeah. And I, I'm super happy with it. Um, I love the, what is that ruler called? The, the one with the cutout lines in it. Stripology. Oh oh my goodness. Yes, the stripology ruler. Mm -hmm. I love that. But then also another one is the tape. The club, the diagonal seam tape. Yes. And that I'm always telling people about. I Mm -hmm. love that. Yeah. I actually keep that tape on my sewing machine Mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah. Just to help me. When I yeah. Need it. Even if you have, yeah, like the foot or whatever. Yeah. You, I still have the tape. Yeah. yeah. I feel like I do that too. Like I use <clears throat> the foot plus the tape. I mean, it's like use all yeah. of the things. Right. Exactly. And I feel like that attributes to like, I just want that to be the perfect quarter inch. Mm-hmm. Like, I, yeah. yeah. What, um, what brand of rulers do you use? Do y'all use the same rulers? Do you have a favorite oh. size? I Mostly, I creative feel like grids. I use Creative Grids. Creative Grids, for sure. Mostly, yeah. I do have a Quilter Select ruler that I really like because it does not oh, slip. Right. Yes. Yes. I, I love that ruler. I just, yeah. yeah, I just got it. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. And we we actually got it a really couple doesn't ones slip. at Market, and it does not move. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Um, one thing I did notice is y'all's borders, they seem to be about the same size. Is there like a standard border size in all of your patterns? I feel like it's like three and a half, four and a half. Is I feel like I started out using five inch borders and then I think I started using smaller ones when Chelsea started designing patterns Uh because I use smaller. Because she used smaller, and, yeah. she, and sometimes she didn't even put a print border at all. She would use just the solid fabric. But yeah. I feel like the past few months, I've kind of been easing them up a little bit bigger again. Mm-hmm. So You have. Yeah. And I borders was always really tricky for me because I didn't want a print border for mm-hmm. some reason. And mom converted me. She always has... <laughs> every single color of a border in her quilts and i'm like that stresses me out like i just want white space right and a binding but no now i'm slowly doing more of a print border yeah but yeah i noticed uh i do normally the same size on all my borders so Mm -hmm. what okay so what's the size it's i i'm usually three and a half yeah. inches yeah. That's, that's always like the standard for me yeah yeah and mine are usually about an inch bigger maybe yes four. yours are, are, are always bigger than mine yeah. i was mm-hmm. gonna say yeah and, I like, and i don't know is that because like you want to show off like more of those florals like more of it 
Yeah, and I feel like too, if I'm having custom quilting done, I want to oh, give true. her more space yeah. to do her little swirly stuff in the border. The feathers, when, like yeah, yeah. Val Krieger does all my custom quilting, and I I feel like I just want to give her space. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> Um, okay, so Maria wants to know what size triangle paper would be used for the family tree quilt that's behind you? Oh, so it's two inches finished, I think. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, and that's confusing. Sometimes the triangle paper, they mm -hmm. mark it with the unfinished size and sometimes yeah. with the finished. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you just have to be, be careful. Teresa says, would you ever make a list of all your patterns and if there are jelly roll or what pre-cuts that would work for them or do you already have a list? You have a blog post. I actually, yeah, I've been kind of working on that and I even reached out to Chelsea yeah. to get hers and so I could separate them by jelly roll, fat eighth and mm -hmm. I've done a few blog posts like that, you know, layer cake quilts and I've included hers and mine. And uh, yeah, so I really should just have a PDF download somewhere where, because I get that question a lot. That's a really good idea. Or yeah. I was going to say, yeah, in my shop, I should probably have different sections where different pre-cut friendly mm -hmm. quilts are. So people know, because you're right. Some people are like, I have a layer cake. How can I easily mm -hmm. find a layer cake pattern? Mm -hmm. And that would make it more simple. Yeah. In fact, I just answered an email like that yesterday. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> so. Okay, so JoJo wants to see Billy's dog and wants to know Billy's dog's name. Okay. Hey, Billy, can you bring Jack in here? Jack. <laughs> His name is Jack. He's such a good dog. He's been through the whole podcast thing with us with Billy. How old is he? Okay. Well, he How old oh. is Jack? Is he like seven billy he's getting old because you can see the gray under his chin. oh yeah that's how my dog it's is so cute yeah uh, billy's gonna get a treat and bring yeah. him in billy <laughs> will bribe him with a treat yeah he pretty much just lays around all the time <laughs> but i will say this about billy we always grew up with labradors and uh billy always i knew he would be the one that would get his own dog like out of all the kids and <laughs> Uh, he did, and Jack is like, Billy will like wake up in the mornings and take him to the park, and like Jack has like his friends at the park, like yeah. that his regulars, you know. Yeah. So I think Jack knows he's getting a tree. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited about this because well, I he, love well, it. He'll show, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah, he'll show. Here, come here, come here, Jack. Maybe. Come here. Oh, oh, there you go. Barely... If he sits, he'll, he'll, his head will... Aww. Here, come here. There. <laughs> He's so cute. It's going to be hard. Yeah, it might be too close. To... <laughs> I, I can adjust the camera. Yeah. Sit. Here, come here. Jack, come here. Sit. Sit. We got all these lights and cords and <laughs> so... Nope, no, sit right here. Jack. Come here. Come here. Yep, sit here. right here. Come here, come here, sit. Here, I'll hold it. Here, I'll hold it. Here, I'll, okay. I'll do it. Come here. Come here. Aww. <laughs> there. <laughs> Aww. Yeah, he's a really good dog. He's so good and good with, <laughs> with all the kids, all the grandkids. Yeah. Okay, sit. Sit. He's like, ah, uh, you're done with the snacks. I'm going to take a nap. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, where are all these lights? <laughs> <laughs> But no, he's definitely a part of the team. He is for sure yeah. a part of the team. <laughs> and Billy is, oh, now you want more. Now you want more treats. <laughs> he knows so, when, yeah. when my kids are over or my sister's kids are over, he knows he can get food from the kids, uh -huh. either dropping right. it on the floor, or they'll <laughs> sneak him food. So yeah, he's a good dog. Yeah. Okay, Anita wants to know if Mahalo is similar to a fan block. It it actually is. Okay. Yeah, it's it's yes. Okay. Oh, I'm gonna save that question. Okay, do you? I think Kathy is asking if we have the coastal summer medallion pattern. It's um, we do have it as PDF. I think the paper is on its way. 
Okay, so let's talk about the tone on tone in strawberry lemonade because we have people asking. So this is this is it. So this is what it looks like. It's got X's just so everybody knows what the tone on tone looks like. And then the navy that's in the um, charity quilt is the circle print. So it's different. Yeah. Right. And that kit does include binding. Okay, Patricia says a friend asked for a table topper in strawberry lemonade, but she wants it round. Do you have any pattern ideas? That's a hard one. Oh, wow. I know that yeah, Doug Lico has a lot of, of yeah, I feel like Doug Lico is the only one that really has those table toppers that are round. I mean, they're not perfectly round because they have triangles, but I know he does have some that are round in his books. Right. Off the top of my yeah. head, though, I mean, I, that's the only person I can think of. Yeah, I can't think. Yeah, I've t the one thing I've done is just sewn simple mini charms together. Mm -hmm. oh, and then I, I take, we have this big silver mixing bowl and I've put it on top and traced it. <laughs> Get the to mixing make a bowl out. <laughs> and then just bind it with bias binding because of the curves. I've done that, but yeah, I haven't written a pattern. Now's so. the time. Yes. Yeah. Brenda wants to know if you guys will do a line of fabric and darker fabric. She loves the lights, but have gotten several of your collections, and she is a big fan. Ooh, that's yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a fun idea. That's something to consider. Yeah. yeah, we both we both love. I think we both love lights and darks. So, yeah. So yeah. Yeah, we haven't done an all just like darker right. tones collection. We've added in those dark grays and navies in different collections, but. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A deep purple would be really pretty. I mean, I'm not a purple person at all, but I know you guys have purples and I know that'd be really pretty. Oh yeah. And yeah. we have some people who just love purples, like they'll buy anything. If it's purple, they're gonna buy it. Um, oh. <laughs> and it's just funny cause, and I think it's, anyway. Valerie wants to know, can you convert a fat quarter pattern into a layer cake? I think it just Usually depends. Not. No. Yeah. You but have to depends. like yeah. sit and draw it out and you'd have to buy a bunch of layer cakes. Yeah. 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 And when I'm doing a fat quarter like pattern, I want, you, you know, as much usability as I can out of that fat quarter. So it just, I don't think the 10 inches would give right. you... Yeah, it wouldn't yeah. really convert well, I don't think, on that. But uh, uh, two layer cakes would be about the equivalent of a fat, fat eighth pattern. So if you had two layer cakes, you could most likely use, a, use it with a fat eighth pattern. The missus wants to know if Jack gets royalties. <laughs> oh, does Jack get royalties? Somebody wants to know. <laughs> In treats. <laughs> Just treats. Yeah, Treats and walks. And walks, <laughs> yes. He gets to go on walks. Uh, Marion <laughs> wants to know what brand of cup you have. And I'm going to crack up if it's the same one that oh. Denise has over here. Oh, no. Okay. I oh, have no. To <laughs> so, is it the same one? This is a hydro jug. Okay, look. It's a hydro jug. Is that <gasps> oh, what my God. That's Denise's <laughs> color. So yes. earlier I said, I, I was pointing at the screen and Denise is like, what? And I'm like, they have the same jug as you. Yes. So what's the deal? You can it. flip it upside down? Yes, and it does not spill. <laughs> and I love it. And I learned about it from my youngest son's fiance. Uh, she's a nurse. Okay. And the OSHA that regulates yes. everything they came through and they made everybody get rid of their Stanley cups oh. because of the straws and oh. the, the hydro jugs were okay because you can Flip it. push the straw yeah. down and it's more sanitary. So after she showed me her hydro jug, I had to get one. So. She calls me one day and says, I got to show you this thing. And I'm like, <laughs> oh no. And both, and my dad has one too. Dad has yes. one too, right? Oh my goodness. Yes. It is like. And she comes over to the house and I like flip it upside yeah. down. And then like my dad will like put it above my head and he's like, were you scared? And I'm like, no, I wasn't. Like, oh my God, that's so, so funny. <laughs> Did you know, Denise, that you could flip it upside down? Oh, that's why she got it, she says. See, I'm not on the loop. I have yeah. no idea. We just have a joke at my house that we can buy no more Yetis, no more cups. We have like a whole section yeah for just that. And then this is 
kind of a funny story, but last year for Christmas, Kevin did not do a good job. He knows. We've talked about it a million times. <laughs> he did not do a good job. One of the gifts he gave me was like this thing to hold the lids for my cups. And I was like, I don't need a holder. You just put them on the cup when you put them in the pantry. <laughs> But my kids are too lazy to do that. So I was just like, oh my gosh. Oh, that's that funny. is so funny. Yeah, but I just have like mugs everywhere, cups. And then Emma, you know, she gets them. Like you get them as part of school. Like even Will yeah, gets them. Like right. if you're a band or basketball, you get all these cups. And nobody wants to throw away <laughs> their cups. So this year we actually put on our kitchen island by kid and then they had to come in and say what they were going to get rid of and keep and they kept everything and i was like that was not the point of this the point of this was <laughs> to eliminate Most to reduce the amount yeah. right yeah that's declutter so funny the, the declutter the, the cups <laughs> the world we're living in now that's funny okay when okay someone and some of these i don't know the names too they want to know when they're going to meet billy's fiance and what does she and does she quilt yeah, Billy's fiance does not quilt, but she is so artistic. Yeah. She can draw anything. And I, so I really keep thinking that if she could just play with a long arm machine, that she could do such amazing designs. And so I'm thinking maybe we'll get her to go to quilt market next fall oh. and she can look at the long arm. I, I'm, this is my little plan, you know. Does she know uh, about your plan? Yeah. <laughs> she, I, we've talked to her about it okay. before a couple okay. times. Yeah. She does all the thumbnails. For yeah. yeah. Oh, she does all the thumbnails for our YouTube channel too. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Yeah. So and I do have to say this: she is the best at um, doing costumes, like for Halloween, oh, or yeah. like she makes them for her nephew, and dress they up. are always so yeah, like. Dress up. Yeah, dress up days. Like she's always like okay. super creative with the dress up days. So she's super creative. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Someone is a beginner teaching themselves with help from watching YouTube videos. Her sewing space is small and she wants to know if there's a plan in the works for a future book just for small projects smaller than 60 inches square. Well, I feel like I, I do a lot of small projects. I've actually been trying to include them with my patterns because I, I love them. I, you know, just like this made with love wall hanging. I love something that you can finish in a couple hours and get up on the wall and, mm -hmm. um, but not necessarily a whole book just with those projects, but I do have a lot of them with my patterns. Yes, yeah, so we can tease that there will be a new book coming from A Quilting Life published by It's So Emma. And all I will say is you will get some kind of information on that in March. So that's super we exciting. We are so excited We're about so that. We're so excited. I'm so glad you teased. Yes. Yeah. And I think it's We're exciting so because... It's hard to keep it... Yeah, it's hard to keep a secret. And so now everybody's yes. going to be on Fat Quarter Shop searching, but we have to wait because it goes with something that can't be shown yet. So... Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're so excited about that. So... Yeah, we're excited too. And I think it's really, um, I think the sew along is going to be really great. Sarah and I were talking about it yeah. yesterday. Yeah, super excited. <laughs> How many hours do you think it takes you to design a new fabric collection? And do you ever get stumped on your colors? Oh, wow. Se several hours. I mean, from the point where I'm drawing in like my sketchbook to rendering those images and everything in the computer and just the computer work. Uh, as far as color, if I ever get stumped, I call mom and she like is always giving me new ideas. We meet up and I feel like we don't ever get stumped. Yeah. I feel like we just get excited about putting more color in. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I feel like when we first started designing, like you said, if you go back and look at our earlier collections, there was a lot less color. There was maybe like five or six colors. And we have been really grateful because just going forward with Moto, we've always been like, no, we want like three greens. We want all these different shades, shades. and just more versatility for each different color group. And so we have a lot of color in our collections mm -hmm. and I love it. So, yeah. but yeah, I, 
lots of time goes into it, but I, I truly can say, like, I feel like we love the whole process of it. We get really excited about new collections. So you guys didn't answer what was your favorite quilt earlier. So oh. Billy did. <laughs> Billy did. Oh, dang. Billy's done. So he said happy-go-lucky, right? I'm going to go with happy-go-lucky, yeah. too, because I have it right here. Okay. And I'm, this is going to be uh, so great on the back of my couch because it just will be like a fun pick up all the colors yeah. in the room type thing. Right. Yeah, I might have to go with the Coastal Summer Medallion. Okay. I really like that one. Yeah. What about you? Man, I I don't know. I feel like Hearts at Home too, just because I like the smaller block and I like that it gives a scrappy feel and so many fabrics are used in it. Mm -hmm. We both really love log cabins. Oh, yes. yes. So I would say favorite quilt block. Love yeah. log cabins. Log cabins and stars for me. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 I think that's probably why it's one of my favorites is the log cabin. Yeah, that gives me a book idea right there for you guys. Okay, so just, <laughs> yes. I'll write it down. Um, okay. So, our, so can y'all talk a little bit about how Moda works with seasonal and holiday fabrics? Like, what year and how many do you get to do that are Christmas? And, you know, like you had a Valentine yeah. group, Christmas group. Can you talk a little bit about what you're, like, how often we can see something that's going to be holiday-ish from you guys? Yeah, I feel like not every year. Yeah, um, right. We actually just met with them at market about that. But um, yeah, another holiday collection will be in the future. Yeah, so we can say that. We can say, <laughs> we can say that. OK, uh, are there new color yeah, combos like, coming? Um, yes. yes, I think there we are. have like talked yes. about this extensively <laughs> i feel like yeah and we're kind of we've kind of been going back and forth with uh yeah yeah we've talked about that a lot so yes it is coming yes <laughs> and do you but yeah, like... typically oh go ahead oh no typically designers do two collections a year but yeah a holiday cl collection might be something that's separate so like an extra collection a year mm -hmm. so and when you're like drawing your fabric, what inspires you? Is it like fashion or home decor, or is it just what inspires you? How do you start your collection process? So I have to be honest, I am a floral girl. Like that is how the basics that I design, that we design actually are the last thing that I, I work on. It is all florals and I think that just comes from, I mean, it, even like nature too, like we'll be on like a hike as a family and I'll be like, you know, way behind my family and my husband's like, where were you? And I'm like, I was taking pictures of flowers. Like, what yeah. were you doing? You know, but no, I have a sketchbook that I've had since we started designing with Moda and I will just sit there and draw and draw and draw. And what's really cute is I've noticed that my oldest daughter now mm -hmm. everywhere, just doodling flowers all the time. And I'm like, yes, it's begun. Like maybe <laughs> she'll design someday, but it always starts with the florals for me. And I don't know, I just keep drawing different flowers and I love it, so. <laughs> and someone also asked if y'all were gonna include some like larger scale florals that could be used on borders and backings. So that kind of ties in. Yeah, this is so funny that that was asked because I was actually looking at, I think one of the larger florals we did was with Emma and it really like scared me because yes. it was really spaced out and the flowers were larger than we normally do. Mm -hmm. and. I really do want to do something really large yeah, and I, I know my should. mom would love it because <laughs> yeah, she I would loves love it. that sort of thing. Yeah yeah, 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 I think it would be great. So that's definitely coming as well. So yeah. yeah. I think sometimes when, you know, when she has a group of things ready to show me, the thing that I always say is you need to add one more large floral. Oh, all the time. It's like a broken record. Yeah. And <laughs> Just so, one more floral, Chelsea, yeah. and I'm like, okay. <laughs> so, yeah. How do you keep your log cabins accurate um, when you're piecing them? 
someone says they have kind of trouble keeping it accurate. Because, you know, it kind of, shr I always feel like they shrink as you make them. Yeah, I, I actually filmed a video on this yesterday. <laughs> oh, perfect. And, you know, I told you I was, yeah, I told you I was using that spray and I felt like the spray helped. Okay. And I also feel like as you're starting to go around, you know, it's kind of a really good in indication of how accurate your quarter inch seam is. Mm -hmm. So if those, when you're adding a strip, if it's too big or too small, that's probably a reflection of your seam and a good way for you to check it. But a lot of times I'll pre-cut the strips so that they're exactly what they're supposed to be. And that way it keeps me on track. Mm -hmm. But then there are also some really great rulers. The Creative Grids mm -hmm. Log yeah, Cabin Trim right Tool mm -hmm. is super helpful, especially for the little, mm -hmm. little tiny ones. And even the 8-inch. Mm -hmm. I, I love that ruler for log cabins because you're trimming it with every round. Mm -hmm. I think this is what I, there's nothing makes me happier than like a perfect log cabin block. I, it's just so satisfying to see everything. So the quarter inch for sure is like when I'm sewing, I think that's why I like the eight and a half inch um, unfinished size, because I feel like it's really easy to like handle when yeah. you go into like a larger log cabin. But yeah, I love it. They're so cute. <laughs> Um, someone wants you guys to talk about how your fabric designs have changed, um, that you've mentioned it a few times in your podcast. And like, do you think it's your color, your style, your design, or all of that? So I love this question too. It's, it's all of it because I feel like when we first started out, your confidence just grows the more that you're designing collections. And I feel like I have learned even so much more and more of what I like and confident in what we like. Mm -hmm. And I, you, and you can go back and look at some of those earlier designs and we really have kind of like evolved, but it's still, we always say the phrase, like it's still Sherry and Chelsea. Mm -hmm. It's just evolved a little bit, mm -hmm. but colors too. I feel like we're more confident working with different colors mm -hmm. and just I think the confidence has grown and um, we really, we get so excited about each collection and um, yeah, I feel like we never run out of ideas yeah. too, so. I, I feel like the flowers that Chelsea draws have kind of a whimsical Very. feel to them yeah. and I love that and I hope that never changes. You know, there's yeah. always just a little something different mm -hmm. that you don't know what to expect. And I, I feel like that kind of has stayed the same. Mm -hmm. um, maybe some of the edges have gotten a little softer, but it still has that little touch of whimsy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and everything looks really, really clean. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. yeah, so yeah. yeah. And then to end, what, this is the, I think the best question. What have been some of the highlights of this journey of working together? Oh my goodness. Wow, that is such a great question. I, I am so, this is me getting really like sappy, but <laughs> I'm just so in awe of my mom. Like I, yes. I, I just think she's awesome. And, um, I've learned so much from her and I feel really lucky and grateful because I have literally like the greatest mentor right here. Like I call her all the time, but we, we get that question a lot. Like, how does that work? Like as a mother and daughter team and we love it and like we totally mean that i it's been a great blessing that we work really well together and there's a lot of laughs and there's you know a lot of compromise and but i wouldn't have it any other way i love having someone that i can you know lean on during everything mm -hmm. you know so wow Thank you. Oh, you're <laughs> so, welcome. <laughs> I, I feel the same way. It, it's just, it's such a good partnership. It's so, um, not that it's always perfect. Yeah, I know. But, yeah. uh, you know, sometimes I think people watch our podcast and they think, oh, that it's perfect, but it's real life. Uh, yeah. But it's, it's just so much fun. And I, I cannot imagine doing this by myself. I just can't. And I just feel like we're always really open to hearing each other's opinions and 
we're really honest. Yeah, super about honest how we feel. about how we feel. And yeah, and we've had just some hilarious times traveling together mm-hmm. that have been so much fun. You know, that I just, I keep thinking of this uh, one trip we were on and I had booked a restaurant for dinner on open table. And I, I put that the purpose of the dinner was a business meeting. Well, somehow they got it confused that it was a birthday. <laughs> They kept bringing us stuff for, and yeah. so I said, "Oh, and her birthday was like a month away," and yeah. so I was like, "Oh, they're like, who's the birthday girl? Oh, her?" And we just laughed and we had so much fun. It just like I'll never forget that. But it was so funny because they walked out and they're like, "Somebody has a birthday." And we're like, "What?" <laughs> yeah. It's it's yeah, and yeah. and I also want to add upon that that. Just Billy coming in Mm -hmm. to this whole thing. It's just the most fun trio ever. Yeah. Like, I mean, I wish we had like a reality TV show that you guys could watch because (laughs) it's just fun. And Billy is just so like, he's just that extra piece that I never knew like we needed to. So I love it. And he'll sometimes... You know, just like fill in that gap and yeah, in the communication process between. Yeah, sometimes the three he's of us. a good mediator. He's a good like... mediator. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he always has good advice. He's very calming. Yeah, he's very calm. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Which is funny because he used to always tease his siblings all so, the time, <laughs> but now he's like the calming. The calm influence. one. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for coming on our live stream. I did do a recent podcast with you guys. So if y'all want to hear that, yes. um, it's on their YouTube channel and on podcasts, wherever you find your podcast. Yeah. We're going to give away five yeah. Jolly Bars today to five <gasps> people. Ooh, oh, my goodness. I know. And the Jolly yeah. Bar kit, a lot of you have been asking, but the kit will be live next week when the yardage comes in. So we have the... We have the Jolly Bars, but we don't have the yardage to put with it. And it has the free pattern. And you have until January 25th to enter. Ashley's going to pick and announce winners January 26th. And you have to comment and tell me your top three quilts that you saw in this video. And if there's any other quilts that they've designed that you want to throw in the top, just let us know. Because I know that they would be really interested to see, like, yeah. What do you like? Yeah, because will. I know that as designers, we look at things and what sells best and what people are looking for is what we try to provide for the future. So that'll be great. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much for Thank having us. Thank you so much. It, it's so just been a delight. Thank you and, so much. And we can't, can't wait for March to share more. <laughs> yes. Yes. And we'll probably do a live stream to announce that. We can do that. That'll be awesome. Yay. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.